To create the callout button, we're going to be employing several different shape layers. So let's uh, group a few of these things together to tidy up our layers panel again. So we'll group all of these layers and group them and just call this callout box. And then we'll create a new layer above that. And this is where we'll create our callout button. All right, we're going to start off with a rounded rectangle. And we need to make sure that our radius value is something high enough so that it'll create a pill shape. So it has to be bigger than the, the height of the object. So I'm going to do something quite large, like 100 pixels. And that way I know when I create this, you can see I have almost this pill shape on either end. So I'll pull this down and rough in the shape here of my button. So I'll kind of, I'm, I'm paying attention to the top and bottom margins here of this button to somewhat align it vertically inside of this box. And that looks about right to me. Now this particular pill shape is going to be the outer shape of our button. So I'm going to select that pill shape and it's essentially going to have the same effect that these uh, images over here we created earlier have. So I'm going to navigate to that image. I'm going to select my move tool and say auto select layer and choose that so it jumps right to it. And I can right click on the effects and say copy layer style because essentially I'm going to paste them on this one. So I can select this, right click that layer, and say paste layer style. So now I've added the exact same attributes to this that I have this. The only thing I need to do is fill the background with this same color over here. And I can simply get my eyedropper, select that, double click this, and paste that color in there. So here I've got this base shape for my callout button. Now the next step is going to be create going to be to create an inner shape where the where the button will actually reside. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this shape and I'll just call this button behind and then I'm going to right click that duplicate the layer and I'll call this button base and that's going to be the layer above the behind layer. And then I'm going to delete these effects. So you can just click and drag them to the trash can because I don't need those same effects on this layer. I just need simply the shape. I'm going to free transform that. And while holding down the Alt key and Shift key at the same time, I'm going to shrink that in a little bit. Now holding down Alt and Shift at the same time will make this shape so that it will resize from the center point instead of from one of the corners. So I'm going to come down just a hair and let go and apply that transformation. Now I can't see it very well, so I'm going to double click it and fill it with black so I can see that area. And then zoom in here nice and tight so I can modify it. So now what I need to do is adjust the shape of this pill so that it fits exactly the same radius. So I'm just gonna get A for my direct selection tool and I'll select the left, sorry, the top two points. Whoops, I need to make sure I don't select the points on the outer one. So I'll just click this one, hold down shift and click this one and just nudge those down. I'm trying to match this bottom margin with this top margin. So maybe that needs to come down two ticks and then I'll deselect and select the top, not the top, the left three points rather. And I'll nudge these to the left. Let's hit, uh, whoops, I hit cancel on that. I need to nudge these to the left. Yes, this we want to do this. If you're, again, if you're in CC, you will see this. I'm gonna say don't show again, so that doesn't continue to pop up. And I'll nudge these guys to the left to maintain that same spacing around there. Do the same thing for the right. Whoops, and it looks like I accidentally had this one selected. So I need to undo um, what I just did. So I'm gonna do Apple Option Z to step back in my history and do those again. So let's select these points and we'll nudge those to the left and then deselect and do the same thing with these right points. Nudge these to the right. Okay, so let's zoom out there and look at that shape. So now it should fit in there with the same radius value and that's looking pretty good. And now I can add some layer styles to this inner shape to create the button shape. Right, now let's change this black color back to one of our color scheme colors. 
So we'll select this um, shape. We'll go back here and select this layer and jump right to it. The button base, I'm going to deselect auto select. And I'm going to double click here and fill this with that green color. Now we're going to be adding several layer, layer styles to this inner pill shape. So the first one is FX. We're going to add a stroke. So let's click on the stroke. And this stroke is going to be set to the outside. And it's just going to be a one pixel stroke. And instead of having a solid color, we've, we've always worked with a solid color. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so we can see this. We're going to work with a gradient stroke on this button. So we're going to switch the fill type to gradient. Photoshop allows for, fit, for strokes to buy, be either a solid color or a gradient color, which is kind of nice. I can even fill them with a pattern should you choose. Now we're going to do gradient, and we want this gradient to go from this color from dark to light. So I'm going to select my gradient editor and select this first color and color pick that same color. Select the second color and color pick the same color. So right now it's just one hue going from the same green hue to the same green hue. So we're going to select this first tick and make sure we select B for brightness and just pull straight down. So we, we maintain the same hue, but we're just pulling down the brightness of that hue. And just ever so slightly, you can see that creates that bottom darkness there. Hit OK. Select the second tick. Make sure you're on B mode for brightness mode and pull up a little bit. So that's just going to create this little highlight. You can see there at the top, which just adds a little bit of depth to this button. So it's not quite as flat. So we'll uh, consider that good. We'll hit OK there. Hit OK there. And the next thing we're going to do is add a uh, drop shadow. So let's click on the drop shadow icon and select that. And we want to pull the drop shadow down to distance, maybe only one or two. And the size we want to pull way down as well to just one. And then take the opacity off quite a bit of that. Back maybe 20 to 30 percent. So we're just creating a little bit of a shadow there to give the idea or hint that this is a little has a little bit of dimension. So as the light comes casting down across it, it would cast a shadow here at the bottom. All right. And then lastly, we're going to add an inner shadow. And this inner shadow is going to cast a, a little bit of a, an additional highlight on the top. So we'll select the color here and switch this to white. And our blend mode, we can switch to normal. And then we'll, again, play around with these settings a little bit till we get something that we, we like. So we can pull down the distance and the size, choke that in a little bit to kind of give that just a little bit of a ridge. We'll bring that down that opacity ever so slightly. And something like that's looking fairly decent. Again, we can tweak these all at, at a later time. We'll just rough it in now. Okay, we'll hit okay there. And we'll come over here and zoom back out. So that's the shape of our button, which is looking fairly decent. And we want to do the same thing that we did to this call out. We want to add a little bit of texture to it. So we're going to convert this button base to a smart object. And we're going to add a smart filter. So filter, and we're going to go add some noise. Select the add noise filter. And just about the same amount that we did before probably works. So about 2%. And then we'll zoom out back to 100%. And the last thing we want to do to this is add one more overlay on top of this to give it a little bit more of a bevel so it looks more rounded and not quite as flat. So we'll take this button base and we're going to right click the entire layer and duplicate that layer. And we'll call this button uh, bevel. How's that? We'll hit OK there. And we can take off the smart filter. We don't need that. And uh, right now it's a smart object. So if we come into the smart object, let's hit OK there, that works. Now we're editing the smart object. We can take off a lot of these effects. So we're going to take off the stroke, we're going to take off the drop shadow and the inner shadow, and we'll come in and add our own. So I double clicked that layer style, which brings up the layer styles. And we're going to add a gradient overlay. And this uh, is what we're going to add for the gradient overlay. And inside of this smart object, we actually are going to close this smart object down. Now, the reason why is uh, if we edit that smart object, it will actually change this smart object. 
Smart objects are kind of like symbols in Illustrator or Flash if you've ever worked with them, where as if, if you edit the master smart object, it will edit all the copies of that smart object. So we'll do this a little bit different. We're gonna delete this layer we just duplicated here. And uh, instead, we're just gonna add a gradient overlay directly to our button base layer. So we'll add another layer style, and we're gonna add a gradient overlay. And the gradient is gonna be just the standard black to white so we're actually not going to edit the gradient at all. The only thing we're going to do is change the blend mode on that gradient. So we'll switch blend mode down to overlay. We can uh, play around with those settings, maybe see if that's something that works for us. We can switch this to screen and play around with those settings. We can switch it to multiply and play around with those settings. And so just kind of find something that works. I, I think the overlay or the screen are turning out um, a little bit like I have envisioned. So, and then you can just simply adjust the opacity to either flatten that out or kind of increase the bevel on that a little bit. So, we'll, I'm going to leave mine on screen and leave the opacity around 60%, 65%. Okay, we'll hit OK there. And then the last thing we need to do here is add a bit of text over here on our button. So, I'll get my type tool and just above this button base layer, we'll say sign me up, I'm all in. So let's uh, let's increase the text there. So same thing, we'll just free transform that text layer, increase that and change that text size to something that's, text color rather, to something that's a little bit darker and maybe we'll make this a straight 12 point font and align that a little bit we probably want the font face here instead of being thin we probably want that a bold font face we will add an exclamation point at the end there and then back off the opacity on that so it's not quite so dark the text there all right, and that's uh, all we need for our button. Maybe we, may, that may be a little bit much text. Maybe we just wanna say, beam me up. As we probably want that text to be a little bit better. We don't, bigger, we don't quite have quite enough room with the amount of text that I entered in there. So we'll just say, beam me up. And again, I could align this text perfectly centered if I select the button base and the text, highlight both of those and just align to the horizontal and vertical center. And that just bumps that right into place. All right, let's save our document at this point. And that's about it for our fancy call out box. We would probably change a few things in here. Maybe we want to make this text down here, this 50% text we added earlier would probably be work well in italics. So we'll switch that to italicized text. And uh, it's a little bit light to read. So we, we possibly could switch that to a green color or sorry, not a green color, a darker gray color. So we could maybe get that text and pull that down to a little bit darker color so it's a little bit easier to read. All right, so in the next section, we'll finish off our content by adding in the rest of the text boxes in our content area.